Hello again guys and welcome to a brand new video series about the Toolkit Color Wheels product. As this is the first episode, it will be more of an introduction into what it is and uh, how it works. And then as we go along, there will be more details on application and how to use it and how to set your own points. But in essence, it's a remote control for curves. And for those that don't know, the curves adjustment layer is one of the most powerful tools that Photoshop has to offer, because you can do literally anything here. Um, the only issue though, is that the user interface is super old. And unless you're working with pure colors, which is red, green, blue, or the opposite then. So if I take away red, I get cyan. And green, I get magenta. And blue, I get yellow. So unless you're working with these six colors, then it becomes really complex. And like if you do skin color corrections, for example, um, then it's a mix of all channels. You need to go into all of these to do the proper uh, color correction. And on top of that, it's also so strong. The effect is so strong by default. So if I take this and drag it just a little bit here, see what happens. Uh, so taking and dragging is basically not even a thing for curves, unless you set really low opacity, but then you're limiting yourself to the maximum effect that you can achieve. Uh, so the solution was to put the points that you want, and then you use your keyboard arrow keys to go up and down, so you can do small adjustments. And this is how you get precision with it. But again, then you have to go into all of the channels for everything that you want to change and put points and change and change and change. It's uh, really painful to work with. Um, so I was very happy with how the color wheels turned out because um, they are scientifically 100% accurate. Uh, which really surprised me as well. I had some help from some really good math geniuses with the algorithms, um, but it still turned out way better than I thought. Uh, I thought it would be um, more of a play and see what you get, but it's actually almost a scientific tool. Um, so now that I have the color wheels, I never ever have to go in here in the different channels, I never have to move points. Uh, the only time I do it is for a like, contrast when I'm moving points back and forth and stuff like that. Um, like to the left and right. Um, but then I only stay in the RGB, which makes it easier. But if I want to adjust color, I'm 100% using the color wheels now, and it made me way more than 100% faster. <laughs> um, so, to show it in action, um, let's just create an RGB. And by default, it has three points uh, on the regular RGB. There's also a different version. I'll show this later. But just to show, uh, I'm just going to play with midtones on this one. And in the next video, we will go through how you can use the other points. But if you then click and drag, it creates that color. So yellow, and then all the ones in between. If you look carefully how the curves move, this is the move you would have to go into each channel and do which is quite 
annoying. <laughs> um, how strong of an effect you get, you can control with this slider or how far away from the center you are when you drag. So this is saturation. How strong the overall effect is, you can control up here. So think of this sort of like opacity, but you can uh, adjust it on the fly. So it's better than opacity. Uh, and yes. And then there's the other version of the wheel, uh, which is rib. And it looks like this. The main difference is that RGB just follows the hues uh, completely. Uh, let me switch back to the other one and show it actually. Uh, like this one. So at the top here, it's going to be one hue. And then it goes all the way around. So here it's 90, 180. Uh, Around here, it's yeah, you can see. Actually, you can't see. <laughs> it's 296 now, 300, and it's approaching now 360. And once it hits 359, and the next one is gonna be one. So hue is the way around here. Uh, it's also live updated. Um, this is something I've improved in the new version, so it's a little bit faster. Uh, it's also slow now on my computer because I have all the recording and all this stuff going on. Um, but you get the effect immediately if you're on a decent computer. Um, yes, okay, back to the rib. Um, as you can see, it's remembered also. So this is also an important factor of the color wheels. Uh, it's not like you do it once and then it's gone. It stores uh, the wheel settings with the document. And don't worry about file size because this is literally one row of text. Uh, but you can save this and then whenever you go back to this document and if you click on this uh, layer, it will have the settings that I did here. Let's do some crazy stuff. Uh, and then I click on a different layer. You see, it's, there's nothing here. If I click on this layer again, I have settings that I had. And this is, like I said, saved. Okay, so back to why rib and what's the difference? As you saw with the hue on the RGB, it goes from 0 to 365, and it does here as well, but it's distributed in a different way uh, that is referred to as the painter's wheel. And the painter's wheel is more about creating harmonies. And I also prefer it a lot because you get a much wider range of uh, from red to yellow, which is basically skin. So you can see here, it's quite tiny and you have quite big green. And here you have uh, way more. And the harmony opposite of orange, for example, is blue. But if you look at the opposite of an RGB wheel, uh, the opposite of the blue is yellow. It's, that's how the color mo model RGB works. But that's not usually what RI find pleasing. So being able to use both modes, both the painter's uh, setting and uh, the regular version is good. It's good to know how they work together. Uh, yes. 
I think that's all I will cover in this first video. In the next one, I'll show um, where the points are, how you can set your own, and how you can actually affect um, the lift gamma and gain as well. So talk to you soon. Thank you guys.